the, so what this is about is 10 years ago, I stood in front of this audience and pushed the IRR. OK, I give. It didn't work. It gets some stuff done. It doesn't do it right. And it's a separate database and filtering distribution, all this. I can learn. We change. So it uh, is uh, the end of Ramadan. It's the day you spend with your family and you break the fast. And it's the end of all evil habits. <laughs> So let's get rid of that stuff. Let's get rid of the broken IRR, the non-functional IRR. Let's get rid of the stale data. Let's get rid of hi route hijacking. All gone, tired of it. The proper stuff is routing security. OK, you can, if you remember uh, from where we meet last, Universal City, I did a talk on uh, routing security. And I'm not talking about how to secure your router from attack. I'm saying, assume your router has been captured. Routing problems are protocol legitimately being used for illegitimate purposes. The prefix hijackings, um, um, redirecting traffic, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's a better version of that talk that I gave at Janog a couple weeks ago in, in uh, Sendai that, that actually gives details of BGP, et cetera. But the big gap in routing security where you have signed routes, signed prefixes, and signed ASs that are formally done is what's missing is how the certificates and the keys move around, how we distribute that. The, the, the equivalent of we've got um, the IRR, and you can query it, and so on and so forth. How do we have a public key infrastructure that has the database in it, that holds the certificates of the RIRs, so their identity is known, that holds the certificates of the ISPs, so our identities are known, and sites similarly, and then the attestations that the RIR sign that says, this has been given to that ISP. In other words, binding the address to the ISP, and similarly for the ASNs. How do we do this? Okay. And let's be clear about what we mean by the attestations. It specifies the identity, the public key in a public-private key pair of the recipient of address space, or an AS. It's signed by whoever gives it to them. So the RIR gives me a slash 16, and I give a slash 24. Da, 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 da. It follows the allocation hierarchy naturally. Because IANA does address space, the RIRs, RIRs to ISPs, ISPs, downstream ISPs, and end user enterprises. OK, so there's a natural hierarchy here. There happens to be one for ASs, too. We don't see it very much. But um, IANA does give chunks of ASs to the registries. And the registries, actually some registries, have given chunks to ISPs who need multiples or to government, especially to end agencies like government agencies. But anyway, the point is both are hierarchic. And we can see how it's used. The IANA allocates to an RIR. So 192 slash 8 is bound to the RIR's public key, and that is signed with the private key of the IANA. So that's verifiable by everybody has the IANA's public key, and they can verify this binding. Similarly, the IRR allocates to an ISP, and so the RIR signs with its private key the binding of the slash 16 to the ISP's public key. The ISP allocates to a downstream ISP or to a user by bad loudspeaker by signing with their private key the 24 bound to the user's public key. Anyone can verify it all because the public keys are available in the public key infrastructure. Excuse the double public there. What's my identity as an ISP? I don't want two things. I don't want IANA RIRs to, to control my identity, my ability to route. I accept the fact that they give me address space, and I have to deal with them contractually for that. 
but they don't control my identity. Secondly, I want that identity to be able to be used across multiple RIRs. I don't want to have to. I manage certificates and everything. I don't want to have to manage a separate set of certificates for Aaron, a separate set for APNIC, et cetera. So I can acquire them anywhere. It can be self-signed. What matters is, and, or I can get it from the IRRs, and 97% of the certificates at ISPs will be small enough that they don't want to generate their own, they don't want to manage their own. It's just an RIR service, just like normal. Okay, but when I join the IRR, if I have my own certificate, the certificate is bound to me because I hand it to them when I sign the contract. That's my identity, and that's all they need. They do no further attestation of the certificate is needed because it's only used two ways: in the business transaction, so they're exchanged and managed by contract or they're bound to an IP or ASN allocation by the attestation of the RIR binding to the contractual thing. And that's it. They are identity certs. They don't need an hierarchy. They don't need a certificate authority chain, all that stuff. You don't need it. It's just my identity, my ability to route, and my ability to transact with whomever I contractually arranged that key with. So therefore, I can take my key that I got from Aaron, if I acquired it from the RIR, and I can use it with APNIC or any other business transaction. It makes no difference where I get that cert. And big organizations will want to manage their own. Small organizations, who cares? You get it from your IRIR. So the RIR's identities are similar. They get their public keys are part of the cert. They can get them from above, like the RIR or the number resource organization or IAN or whatever. It makes no difference. They can buy them outside. The hard issues, and the one this talk does not speak to, is key rollover, revocation, et cetera, in case of compromise or in case of expiry. Okay. How it works. There's the database, and we'll go into the fact that it is not a single database, and the Aaron does not have to be up for you to route. We have RIRs, and we have ISPs to start with. Here's a let's call it for joking, a tier one ISP. And when I make my contract with the RIR or renew it or whatever, I give them a copy of my certificate that says this is my identity and it contains my public key. When I get an ASN number from the RIR, the RIR, as I showed you, signs the ASN number with their private key and binds it to my public key. Similarly from address allocation, and it goes into the database. When I allocate to a downstream ISP, in other words, I have an ISP, another ISP as a customer, I do the same thing. I bind their certificate, which they gave me when they became my customer. I bind their public key to the sub-allocation of the address space that I received here, okay, and I sign it with my private key. Similarly, I, if they want, I could issue, be the certification authority for them and issue certs and put that cert in a database. Same thing when they give to the end site. And this thing can be replicated all over the place. There can be thousands of replica. and. You're, of course, going to want them near the routers because you're going to want to use the, these signed attestations to have formally verifiable routing so there are no more high, routing hijacks. Okay. Why is, there's an RFC that tells you how one way that you might build these interfaces in other words, the, the reading and the writing of data. Okay. It also describes some transactions for publishing certs, etc. A key thing to realize is the PKI itself is self-authenticating. To make a copy of it or to transport it, you do not need transport security. It is self-authenticating. Put a copy on a CD-ROM if it ain't right. It's not going to be consistent. The SIGs won't work. Done. It's done. Okay, it's just a bag of certs. Okay, no need for transport security. The RIRs are going to need tools to generate and receive them. 
certs, to receive attestations from whoever they get it from, like the IANA, to, a, to attest, in other words, to put in what we now call um, um, who is templates that when an allocation is made, and the RIRs have to manage their own keys, of course. What am I doing for time, Joel? Got it? Um, for ISPs, we're going to have to generate and acquire our own keys and identity certs and get them from upstairs, whatever. Register role certs with the RIRs and upstream. Generate certs for um, um, a downstream ISP who doesn't want to generate their own. And to sign the IP allocations to downstream ISPs and end user sites. Okay. Some open issues. The coordination of updates, one central repository is not operationally feasible. The scheme suggested by the Internet Vendor Task Force is RFC 3377 with an authentication method 2829 for LDAP. And it does address this issue. Okay, but the big thing is cert key rollover and revocation is not addressed here because root certs like the IANAs, the RIRs, what happens if it's compromised? How do they get out a new key? Okay, and so this may require a separate and secured communication channel. Um, somebody said put it up on a website, there are only seven of them. It's possible, have to think about it. Okay. Um, there's the benefic the people uh, who I owe thanks to. Open mic. Oh, and for those who are interested, um, wickedlasers.com. This is their lowest power one. The big one's cut. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Varendra of River Domain. Um, I think you probably mentioned that in your previous slide, but just it's, I'm sorry if I brain gas, uh, but um, are there any time to live on this certificate? Yes. The certificates do have expires like normal. Okay. And so, um, but, but the, and that's the key thing of separating out how we do the ISP certs is when I get an address space from Aaron, in reality, in the truth, when you read your contract, you will see that that address I have as long as I keep paying Aaron. So it's okay. I have to accept, and we have accepted for a decade now, that um, to keep that address space, I have to keep paying my tithe. And so they'll tie the expiration to the length of the contract, and, and probably t because of the administrative, et cetera, they'll give me an extra six months or whatever. Okay, but that cert will expire and has to be, that, that attestation will expire and has to be renewed, that signature. But the ISP's identity cert, that's my identity. Aaron, Iana, nobody else has the right over that. I can control its expiration, rollover, and renewal. That's the key here, different to the song you've heard sung elsewhere, is I control my identity. I control its expiration and keep rollover and renewal. Does that make sense? Right, so, but if you renewed it, then you would, it would be a, a manual? I have to give it to Aaron right. again. Okay. It could be manual, it could be automatic. Okay. You'll see AP is going to do some very right. cute stuff where they have web pages, you can push your cert up, da 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 da, da. Okay. All right. et cetera. Thanks. Andrew Dahl, Boeing. How are we going to get this funded? Patience. Collection? Right now, I'll take cash. No, um, um, I believe Seriously, that, we need I, probably uh, $10 million probably for this or something? I don't think that's an issue. Um, I think that'll be handled. The real problem is that there are some people who need to hear that the operator community is it, presuming somebody is willing to do the work and pay for it, that the operator community would really prefer to see a rigorously correct and provable solution, or not provable, verifiable solution, technically, an actual reasonable security architecture, then one more hack on the IRR, or one more this hack, or one more that hack. There we go. Thanks, Rob. Is it all American? Cool. Do um, you want a receipt? It's not tax deductible. Um, but um, I don't have a hat. Anybody got a hat? No. Um, 
But, but they need to hear, their people, DHS, the RIRs, et cetera, et cetera, need to hear from this community that, gosh, if you'll actually do it for us and give us the tools, we would prefer this to yet one more hack on the RIRR, IRR, et cetera. So the second question is... And that's is why I'm up here. I'm here in my... Mar this is my marketing clothes, by the way. Um, I'm here. My, that's why I'm here in my marketing clothes to, today, because I think we want a rigorous, verifiable solution. Second, what's the forum to discuss and nail down all the details? I'll be at APNIC in two weeks. Well, APNIC is Asia Pacific. Where's the forum in this region? Right here is not bad. So um, we're going to have a whole bunch of Montreal working, Aaron working groups coming great, up here? Montreal Aaron meeting would be a great place. Is, if, if, is that the right forum? There's operators right, are very well what's a represented right forum? there. I mean, what, what, what's the definition of a right forum? Pardon? IANA I isn't a forum. Um, um, let, let me cut through that. Um, I'm not one that believes in design by committee unless you want a camel. Um, so, but we yeah, need to get the but, right people but together I think it's to make this happen if we want it to happen. And if, where's, right. where's That's the right the place, place to well, make it happen? The, the, what we need is to communicate that we as a community want this approach. And I'm sure that competent security folk such as Sandy's family and friends, Steve Kent, Steve Bellavin, et cetera, et cetera, will gladly take on the task. But, but what's missing is for us as a, for we as a community, for we to send the message, for us to send the message, for us as a community to send the message that we want a correct, rigorous, and verifiable solution. And the, the reason we've been waffling is we don't see a path to one. And I'm trying to say there are valid paths. There we go. Go for it, Vince. Comments. Pardon? Short comment. Um, soliciting input from this group is a great thing, but I think you need to be more targeted in your marketing effort. And you need to look at why previous efforts along these lines failed, and you need to go to those organizations and ask them if they'll support this when they didn't support previous efforts. Ted? So basically, you're the skip. The Skitter Core Group, to use some yeah, slime. Yeah, I, I understand. Ted, okay. you around here? Chris Morrow? If you get them on, you have to get them on board, or this I, is I, a waste I'm of time. I'm trying, I'm trying. Come on, Chris. <laughs> Hi, Chris. There's a microphone, Chris. I'll even lose mine. <laughs> yes, why does CITs filter their customers' things? No, I don't want them to filter their customers. I want them to say they will attest to their customers so that I don't need to build filters. We do filter customers. They just have to email us to say what they want added. But I think the problem that this highlights is not filtering or not, it's being able to verify if the filter is correct or not. So if a customer sends me a 1,000 routes, the guy who's going to do the prefix list update, honestly, probably not going to do the checking he should. But if I had something to shove it into a system and automatically pop out and say 999 of 1,000 are correct, this one's wrong, go tell the customer to fix it in some way, that would be better. Some type of automation. In the, you know, if you want to use certificates, if you want to use some other kind of way to make the automation happen, great. I don't really care, actually. There as are long no as filters anymore with this scheme. What's that? There are no filters with this scheme. No, you, no you're not implying filters. You're just saying that... You know, I have a big slash 12, and I allocated a slash 24 to Jared, and he allocated a slash 27 to somebody else. And but your can router can verify it when it receives the announcement and check the signature. And I'm not sure I would go as far as making the routing protocol do that, but... Actually, this is neutral to SBGP and SOBGP. I prefer SBGP. SOBGP would transport the PKI, et cetera, et cetera, and do separate path verification. But let's not go into that particular war. I think yeah. we need to keep this short. So yeah, my, is, if, if we can Chris restrict it to short. statements at this point. <laughs> yeah, the, the end of my statement is basically, I'm not sure I want to do this in the routing protocol today, but 
being able to do it in the OSS system would be helpful. So somebody else can figure the routing problem out. I'm just a chemical engineer. Thank you. <laughs> I realize this is an implementation detail, but as somebody who provides transit for an awful lot of early direct allocations by comparison to anything that I might be providing transit for that's a, uh, um, that's a, an RIR allocation, my question is whether you have any thoughts about how to deal with the old ancient crufty stuff. Look, solving the legacy space problems orthogonal. You're going to have to solve it if you're doing IRR games. You're going to have to, da, 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 da. but this means that this this will give the RIRs and the community a tool to express whether the data are good or not. So they can have their 50 Starbucks refugees making the phone calls and the faxes trying to chase down those legacy owners. And when they actually have one, they can say, aha, this is real certificate signed, and you can tell that those data are good formally. As, as an interim solution, since that's a multi-year project, would it be reasonable to, try to treat the pre-RIR space differently, special case of it? This was evil. Yeah, yeah. Last Sorry. comment. <laughs> Can you give her the mic, please? It's on. Okay. Sparta. Following Chris Morrow at the mic means that I had to turn the mic way far down. Um, Randy, you said something about this means there are no more filter lists, but what you've presented here is a way to create a authenticated list of authorized prefix origination, something I like to call a LAPO. Um, but it could be used for what Chris Morrow talked about, customer support, somebody comes in with routes, how do I know whether it's right or not? And it could be used for building filter lists and it could be used for checking the updates I received against the list that I get and are they right or even so far as having signatures in the protocol. This is a first step for a whole bunch of different things. For the whole range. But it's, it's, um, you know, it's the first step for all of those things. So whatever you want to do to protect routing security, this is the first step to actually if, build if that. You want to do it with, to hmm? If you want to do it with formal tools. If you want to do it with yeah, Which I do. With, with, with you know, <laughs> real strong basis for the tr for the trust model. Yeah. Okay, well said. So so you can use it for manual verification. You can use it. I mean, Sandy said it. Right. Thank so, you, Randy. Thank you, Joel, thanks, for moderating. Sorry for